Hey YouTube, fellow A-liner owners and anybody else that's interested in modifications to a small camper, behind me here is Arlene, our beloved 2017 A-liner Ranger 12. She's pretty standard, as you can see, no dormers or anything. It is the off-road package with the Cool Cat heat pump, and we do have the wind lift assist kit. Those would be the only options. So it's a standard A-liner 12-footer you know, with the bed um, in the couch in the back that converts to be a larger bed and the dinette in the front that converts to a smaller bed. But after five years and 250 something nights in it, my wife and I decided it was time to make some substantial changes so we could be more comfortable in the camper. Uh, we wanted twin beds because we are getting tired of climbing over one another in the night and in the morning getting out of bed. But we wanted to be able to switch to twin beds without losing a dedicated place to eat. So we were able to do that by employing a lagoon table and in making these changes we actually gained bed space and floor space. So step inside with me and I'll show you what we did and how we did it. First, a quick overview. Here's the front bed. That was where the dinette was. That is now a 76 by 34 inch bed. Plenty wide enough to be a single bed. Uh, frankly, if you wanted to keep the dimensions the same as the dinette bed, the bed that the dinette converts into, you could have that 76 inches long by 46 inches wide and use the same cushions that they give you for the dinette. Uh, we wanted a little narrower bed uh, so we could have a little seating area here to take our shoes on and off when we come in and out of the door as well as just uh, a little platform here either to act as a nightstand or place to put some stackable drawers. Uh, we had a piece of 5 inch foam from an old memory foam bed that we had so we cut it to size I think that one has a 1 inch topper on it so it's uh, 6 inches of foam 5 firm and 1 inch memory foam on top it's extremely comfortable my wife sewed those lovely uh, covers uh, to keep the foam together and to keep it clean uh, but that is now the uh, dedicated front bed in keeping the bed a little narrower, we gain some floor space there. Uh, while it's not much, you know, it's uh, a foot deep and whatever that is across. It's extremely important because it gives you a place to step out of the way when someone wants to get by or come in and out of the camper. And so you don't always have to be doing that camper dance, you know, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, as you pass somebody. So it's great to have a couple little new places in the camper just to be able to step out of each other's way. And this is the back bed. Again, that's the old couch that would pull out to the double bed. It's just kept in its closed position. It gives you a 76 inch long by 36 inch wide platform. I believe the pad that we actually have on it is about 34 inches wide. And uh, here we were able to use the uh, cushions that came with the A-liner. We used the uh, one of the long wide ones and the little long skinny one that they give you made for a 34 inch um, pad and again we had some 2 inch here 2 inch memory foam that my wife put in another cover so again between the two 6 inches of foam here extremely comfortable to sleep on. This is our I call it cafe eating area because it's fairly small but uh, what you have there are chairs that are 20 inches wide and uh, 22 inches deep all the way to the wall of the camper. Of course the back takes up some so they're plenty comfortable. Um, we have nice again 5 inch foam cushions on those. I'll show you those in a minute. Uh, but here's where we put the lagoon table and that's the key to the whole project really. The key to this whole project was mounting the lagoon table and making these chairs. So I want to show you more about that in detail but for right now I'll just show you um, that's the table out where you'd want to eat if you want to get in, you know, you can just push it out of the way for either seat. When it's time to uh, go to bed or whatever, this table will come all the way around. And now for the bed, it serves as either a nightstand or, I guess if you're cooking, additional counter space. But uh, super easy to get in and out of those chairs because you can just push that lagoon table around in any position that you want. 
Here I am sitting in one of the dinette chairs and one of the nice things about changing this the way we did is that I can now see out these beautiful windows when we eat and I don't have to worry about my head hitting the ceiling ever. I'd also like to show you these privacy curtains for the beds that my wife made. Um, these are simply shower curtains that she shortened and hemmed and uh, then we got these extra long shower rods. They're just uh, held uh, in place by tension in these cups at the end. Of course, they do have to come down and lay on the beds when it's time to fold up the camper and move. But um, during you know your camp stay, they're great because one of us can get up or go to bed before the other and draw the curtain and have some uh, privacy or darkness uh, or whatever. Just a nice little feature makes for these nice little private berths. We have one on each bed. For those of you who might want a closer look at how I did this, I wanted to show you how I mounted the lagoon table and made the chairs because to me the little cafe area was critical to the project and if I couldn't get that right I didn't want to do the rest of it. So the first thing was the lagoon table and honestly if you don't want a lagoon table and want to save yourself 200 bucks you could always go to a folding table or tray and put it in here. Um, it might actually you know, be something you could use inside or out. But I had seen these lagoon tables uh, in different campers at camper shows. I was kind of enamored with the flexibility of them. So I went ahead and got the lagoon. And um, the, really the only place I could mount it is where you see there. In the bulkhead there you see you've got the ducts for the uh, heat pump. You've got the carbon monoxide detector. You've got the converter cover. There's very few places you can mount it. So I did find a place here where it mounted well. But it's very tight to the converter cover. So in order to do that, you want to get Lagoon's sliver mount. That's new to them, but it's a mount that's no wider than the post. And uh, they also give you the choice of whether you want that tightening cam there, that handle, on the right or left side. And so in this application, uh, it needed to be on the right-hand side. Now let me take the bed apart and I can show you exactly where I drilled the holes uh, for the mounting bolts. As I take the bed down, I just wanted to show you those are the two A-liner provided cushions that I used for the back bed. The first thing I'm going to do is pull off that hatch lid, that big piece of plywood right there on the left hand side. Then you need to remove this protective box that they've built around um, the inside of the converter really. And it's held in place by four uh, screws here. They are those square heads so you'll have to get that type of fitting and then three down there on the floor. Okay now with the cover off uh, and looking down I'll show you where I mounted the lagoon table. That's your converter box. This is all the wiring. It's really easy to push out of the way but those are the three bolts and washers that are supplied with the lagoon table. I was able to uh, mark the places inside, drill a little pilot hole through from the back and then come through the right size hole from the front so I would have them located properly. Um, it's a good place to mount them because this upright was already here and it's very solid. Um, you know, it won't twist or bend. Um, I did notice that over here they had the face of this cabinetry piece um, reinforced or connected with this angle bracket here and here, I guess to keep it from coming forward. There wasn't one here, so I went ahead and added that. And then I went ahead and added one down there on the floor as well. So I'm quite confident that's very strong and um, it, it's tight, uh, but it's just perfect for it. The lagoon mounts don't come with a tabletop. You need to provide that yourself. So of course you could always make one. Um, we simply bought a cutting board off of Amazon. This one is made out of acacia wood. I think it's really pretty came finished like that with the rounded corners. Very nice. I think it was like $45 delivered. Um, it's 18 inches by 24 inches long so it's just right for two people and fits the space perfectly. Uh, if you need a little more room for your drink or condiments or something you got a little countertop right there by your arm. Uh, the only drawback to this is that it's kind of heavy. Uh, being an inch and a quarter thick I think it's like 12 pounds so it's too heavy to leave like that uh, and travel with. So let me show you how I put it in travel mode. I simply pull the top off, flip it over, lay it on the bed, and then uh, 
put the arm back on it. It will fit in either side. And then I push the post down until it's kind of squished into the bed, tighten everything back up nice and tight. And now it's in full contact with the bed, all tightened up, won't shake, rattle, or go anywhere. This is one of the seat bases I made uh, out of half inch plywood and solid steel three part hairpin turn legs that I ordered online. Uh, I'll take that off and show you how exactly those are made and fit. Okay, so these are the hatches that support the back of the seats. And the first thing you want to do is take off these hatch lids and set them aside. Keep them if you ever want to put your camper back. The framing here was a little bit inadequate, I think, for the weight. I mean, most of the weight will be supported here in the front and by those steel table legs. And here in the front, there are a couple of uprights. Um, but there weren't in the back. So I cut a couple of staves and placed them here in the back where I could um, by the wheel well. And also here in the corners, uh, these were simply stapled together and I didn't want any you know, force coming out this way. So all the corners have been reinforced with these angle brackets. The framing for these hatches is uh, 17 and a half inches. And uh, I was only able to get 17 inch legs so uh, what I did was I just put an extra piece of half-inch plywood here in the front on my seat cover and um, that gets the height just right and it also serves the purpose of strengthening it across the front where most of your weight will be. And You can see that these uh, cold rolled steel legs just screw in right there uh, I guess with uh, four different screws. Very very sturdy and uh, you know, keep this from slipping forward. Uh, I put a stop here that catches the front edge of the cabinet and then um, drilled a couple little finger holes just to make it easy to pull on and off. Because the whole idea here was to be able to remove these and still get to the storage that those hatches provide. Uh, I put felt around the sides and the back uh, so that this moving in and out uh, wouldn't scuff the existing cabinetry. So there again it is in place. Um, really snug. You couldn't get much of a tighter fit. Uh, these legs do have uh, plastic floor protectors you can put on them. And uh, again this is not attached in any way so you can pull it off and get to the storage space underneath them if you'd like. If it becomes a problem with them bouncing up and down uh, when we travel I'll be able to just to simply maybe put a screw or two into the framing down there and uh, hold them in place. Now you wouldn't be able to get to that storage area quite as easily, but that may just be a trade-off we have to make. I'm very blessed to be married to the beautiful woman that's my wife for a lot of reasons, but one nice perk is that she can, she can sew, unlike a lot of us guys. So she made these really nice cushions uh, to fit the dinette seats. They uh, are vinyl on this side. And then you can flip them right over. And the other side is the fabric that matches the bed, uh, front, edge, and top. They're super comfortable. Again, 5-inch foam, and they breathe. One thing that she did that I thought was pretty smart, uh, so you put some grommets uh, down one side, so the vinyl, if it wants to kind of hold the air, it's got a place for the air to come out when you sit on it. Here are the backs that we made. They're a little different. They are actually on a piece of uh, quarter-inch plywood with um, a real dense one inch foam uh, taped to it and then on the same vinyl material is just fitted and stapled to the back with a back cover. But what makes them kind of interesting is that I have cut these angled wooden um, supports again lined them with felt so they wouldn't scuff the camper anyway but they keep that back cushion at just the right angle for your back. There it is in place, and uh, now when you sit on it, it's comfortable because it's not straight up and down. Uh, it's more like kind of like a bucket seat or something, and you don't need a lot of foam on the back because that's not really where the most of your weight is. So we've got 5-inch foam down here, super comfortable, about 1-inch dense foam behind you there. The angle is just right, and uh, we find them really, really comfortable. Of course, it's important that whatever you do, you could use cushions. You could buy existing cushions to do these things if you don't know how to sew. Um, but whatever you do, the back rest is going to have to fold down below your hinge point here so you can fold the camper.
Once we were successful in making a good dinette area, we went ahead and converted the uh, old dinette area into the front permanent single bed. And that was really easy. You just take out the table and the pedestal mount. It just screws to the floor. Uh, then I took the four slats that A-Liner provides to convert to a bed up here. And I shoved them all together toward the back. And just one screw each, screwed them down so they won't pop out and rattle around when you're going down the road. It kind of holds them in place. Um, you could make, again, this bed as wide uh, as they intended, 46 inches, um, but we wanted the extra space, as I talked about. So there you can see where I finished um, that board, just where it shows, so we could use as a tabletop, and then over here, of course, we use that as a sitting area. And this is the other cushion that my wife made out of that um, really pretty vinyl. I think it's kind of fun looking, but it fits just right there and gives you a great place to sit. Another thing to show you on that front bed, underneath here I've made an L-shaped bracket out of just one inch thick wood, um, and then screwed it down the center uh, here and just added strength like a little L-beam it keeps it from sagging if you sit on the edge of the bed, which I know everybody's going to want to do. Uh, I also took a post here and screwed it right there to give that some support in the front. And that's the only place I really had to screw into the floor. You can see there there's a little angle bracket in the back that just keeps that from kicking around. But that makes that really nice and secure and uh, really strong. And you only screw in from underneath so you don't mar up. Uh, these slats in case you know you want to uh, return your camper to original. Um, the other nice thing about this uh, L-shaped support is it gives a guide for our porta potty to slide up under there. And I'll show you how that works here in just a second. Another great thing about moving the dinette is uh, we not only have more floor space, but we've got more storage space now too. You know, I have this cabinet that I made uh, already but uh, you can still get to it very easily and slide your basket in and out. But in addition, now you can slide things underneath here where you were sitting before. Uh, suitcases, uh, baskets, and we also store our porta potty under there. So it's bungeed in place right now in the back corner where it can't go anywhere. Let me unhook it and show you how that works. So there it is with the bungee unhooked. The bungee stays in place because it's captive at one end and I put a little leash to make it easy to get hold of and slide out. And here's some more of my wife's handiwork. This is a uh, cover made out of the same vinyl she made the cushions out of. And there's our Dometic porta potty all ready to go for us for those midnight runs. One final detail to the project is I had to move my power strip I had it on the front wall under the old dinette, so um, this had to be relocated right here at the side of the bed. It works out perfect. You can charge things right there on that flat spot. Uh, to do that, I just got a power strip with a shorter cord this time. Make sure you get the kind that's got that nice flat plug. Wrap it around. It hides under the lip of your counter. Hold it in place with 3M sticky hooks, and uh, you're good to go there. In making these changes to our camper, here are a few items we were able to remove. First, this big, heavy extension board that allows your sofa to become your double bed in the rear. Then the existing table and pedestal. All of the dinette cushions. One long rear bed cushion. And finally the two hatch lids for the st storage area above the wheel wells. That's a lot of stuff. Okay, A-liner fans. I'm done. I'm hot and I'm tired. I know that was long. Congratulations if you made it to the end. You must really be interested. Uh, but I hope you found that helpful. If you ever thought about changing your A-liner over from a double bed to two twin beds. And again, um, I know there's a lot of interest in lagoon tables. I think they're swell. So uh, I hope you found that helpful too. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And thank you for watching.